Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract. And in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at custom classes and how to use custom classes with Zim inside of a module. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com and we'll take a look at the code section. Go into tools and scroll on down to custom library. We've already done a Zim Explorer on the custom library with custom modules, how to apply the ES6 modules. So this is the second part in a sense of that. We're exploring what's in this zip file right here. And we're going to take a look at how to make the classes now that also can work with Zim Duo. So that's how to handle parameters in a regular manner or as a single configuration object with properties that match the parameter names. Um, and we'll show how to use Zim V, so dynamic parameters, very powerful, and Zim style, so oct, Zim oct with style, so how to apply style to objects made from your custom classes. And the reason why you want to use custom classes is then you can use that class across multiple projects, and you would store those in a module. All right, let's go take a look and see what's in that zip file and how we made those classes. So we're reducing that down. Here's the zip, the library, or this is the what will be in there. And we have an app folder and a modules folder. The index that we're looking at here is a simple one with Zim Duo. The Zim Globals, or the index for globals, is almost the same, simple with Zim Duo, but the full one then shows how to work with uh, the Zim V values for dynamic parameters and the style, Zim Oct. All right, we have in, we're in a script type module. We've imported Zim and we're importing house from the module right here. So that allows us to just make a new house. Great, yay. And we're applying the house will extend a container, a Zim container. And that means we get the alp method, the center method, the animate method, XY properties, etc. We've also added a custom property to the house that is called bottom color, and there we are getting it and setting it. And we'll see how we do that. We're applying a method right here to the house. So we'll see how to make methods inside of our class. And then we're also uh, capturing an event here. So we'll see how to dispatch events from our class. Okay, uh, let's go into our class here in the module. So we've got some docs for that. And then here is our class house, which extends a Zim container. We're exporting that. So we dealt with the exporting in the previous uh, Zim Explorer. So here, when we extend a Zim container, note that we put the Zim namespace here and we're putting the Zim namespace inside of, or before the colors as well. And that's just in case you're using Zim with the namespace turned on or required. And you would do that with um, ZNS equals true in a script above where you import Zim. So uh, we have to assume when we make all of our Zim classes, we have to assume that some people are using the Zim namespace required. And therefore, everything that we make in our Zim code has to have the Zim in front of it. <laughs> Sigh. Uh, yet when we go outside of, of that and make some apps with Zim, then we usually don't use the namespace. That's just us. Okay, so uh, here is the constructor of our class, and the purpose of this explore isn't necessarily to teach you about classes, but uh, to sort of show you how to incorporate Zim into the classes. But uh, it will still, you know, will tell you enough, and maybe you'll find it handy to if you're even new to classes. So we have a constructor that's going to get called first, and here's where we receive our parameters. And we've set some default parameters there using the ES6 format, yay. So there they are. If you don't provide a size, it will be 100. We can't do the defaults in this manner when we have style uh, because we might have to find out from the style what would be used for a color, say, if, if style's been set. Okay, and that can't be calculated right here inside of the default values. So you'll see how we do that um, in the full module here. <clears throat> we call the superclass. The superclass needs to be called before we can use the keyword this, which is something a little bit new. 
Um, and that means we actually don't know, this is the Zim Duo technique right here, if we are receiving a configuration object, it will only know what the values are here. It won't know it here, which means we can't say add a width and a height or collect a width and a height and then make the super class that width and height. So we're calling the super container and then applying width and height and bounds down below here to adjust it after. So it's a little bit bothersome. In ES5, we can call the super whenever we want and we can use this whenever we want. So we would do this and then down below here, once we you know, figure out what all our parameters are, then we would call the super constructor with those parameters. So I haven't quite worked out how to deal with that exactly. It, it works fine here. So hopefully you'll be all right extending a container. It's no big deal. Um, here's what we did with the Zim Duo. Uh, you would just basically copy these two lines right here. And we put in the parameters as a string right there, size, bottom color, and top color. That allows Zim Duo to work even if this is minified, this code. It also is a requirement for ES. ES6 uh, wasn't a requirement for ES5. And yeah, like I said, just copy this format here and it should all work for you. Here we are uh, applying the size to the container as mentioned. And then down below here, we have a, a property called type with a value of house. We tend to do that in Zim. If you make any object like a new circle and you ask for the circles type, it will say circle. So it matches whatever our class name is up there. We're applying two more properties, bottom and top, and we're referencing the rectangle that we're making for the bottom of the house and the triangle for the top of the house. Note that those are positioned on this. So this represents our container object that we've made, and therefore uh, we'll end up seeing a rectangle and a triangle. Oh, have we seen anything? Yeah, let's go see something. So we will uh, go back to our index here and open it up and let's see what, what our house is. So open the default browser. There it is. And there's the method going. Can you see that? There's our top and our bottom and our event method. Okay. So back in our module then. Uh, bottom then represents the bottom rectangle. Top represents the top rectangle. That means that in here, if I wanted to, I could say, hey, we've made our house. I could say house dot bottom. That's our bottom rectangle dot move uh, 500. Oh, well, maybe not that much, 50. And now you'll see that we have a bit of a crooked house. Uh, <laughs> or did I make a mistake? Missing a round bracket um, on 36. Oopsies. There we go. Wrong way there and refresh here. Oh, cricket house. <laughs> nice, huh? All right, so that's how the this works. This represents our house object. Our, here's our object, and we've stored our object in house. Anytime we store something on this, it's available then on the outside via house. All right, if we don't want a variable to be stored um, on the, like we want to use it across our, our class here, uh, we can store it as a private variable, like so, number sign mm, test there. So there we are declaring it up here. And now we can go something like this dot test, oops, number sign test or pound test is equal to check in quotes. So now we have a property that uh, we could use down below in here. So if down below in fall, this is one of our methods, we could zog this dot pound test like so. And let's see if it works. Oh, we have to upload this. Um, this is a module. So we're uploading the module now to the server and uh, that's on the server. We've got uh, an access there that will tell us that we are allowed to access that. And we all worked, we worked through that in the last, the last Zim Explore. And let's do a refresh here. Shift refresh to clear the cache. F12 to see our console. And bottom is not defined. Why is bottom not defined? What did we do? 
That was in index line 36. Bottom dot move. Hmm. Oh, uh, right. House dot bottom dot move. I'm not even sure why we've still got the house dot bottom here. Maybe I was trying to delete it and didn't get through it. So we'll just leave that comment out. Oh, delete it. Okay, and a refresh here. My apologies. This is a Zim Explorer. Uh, there it falls, and look, it says check. So once we call the fall after we waited, right here, timeout of two, we called fall, and here we are inside of our module, and this right here said check, because that's what we stored in our global. The other thing that we can't do, though, uh, the, the reason why that's called a private variable is we've stored it there. Remember how we... Yeah, let's do it here. Let's zog and how about blue? What house dot number sign check is. And you know what's going to happen, right? Let me refresh here. Private field check must be declared in an enclosing class or whatever. So we, we can only use check inside of our class. Anyway, we don't need a private <laughs> variable check or a private property called check. Just letting you know that that's uh, how you could do that if you so desire. So when it's stored just on this, we can access it from the outside. Great. Here's a method. The methods are next to the constructor. However, uh, so that's great. A very simple way to make methods. But uh, it being the methods here, if we wanted to use, say, one of these things like the size, uh, we could not zog size in here because size is only available in the constructor. Same with any const in here, whatever const test is equal to hello or heal, <laughs> depending on what it be. Now we could not zog. Um, what was it? Test here either because it, it was declared up in the constructor. So sometimes that's quite annoying to have that that issue. Um, so what we often do is we would store the methods right up here. This dot fall and um, is equal to a function. And then we would have the direction right in here. With the squiggly brackets and then in here we could say zog uh, test or indeed size so now we can zog both test and size inside here and so you know it's, it's kind of up to you i i like this because it allows me to access things inside here in the constructor including all like maybe a hundred parameters or however many parameters we have i might want to make use of them so in zim we often will put the methods right up in there like so okay as it says here but this is probably i suppose one might call the encouraged way to do it um, this would be equivalent to accessing the methods on what's called the prototype back in ES5, the old version of, it's still around the prototype, and probably this is just a shortcut into storing methods on the prototypes. And in that case, you'd have to use this as well between you couldn't use local variables. So just a bit of history there. In our method, we are setting the registration, we're animating, and we've got a callback where we're dispatching an event. So, ah, here's our dispatching an event. Note that we're inside an arrow function here, and therefore this will refer to the object. If we were inside an anonymous function, function round bracket squigglies, like so, then this refers to the function, and we'd run into a problem. So in that case, we usually would do something like uh, const that is equal to this here. And what that does is it, it stores a reference to the variable, or sorry, a re reference to the object inside of a variable called that. And then inside here, we can use that, and that would work just fine. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> that would work fine. All right, anyway, uh, with the arrow function, yay, we don't have to do that anymore, so that's, that's nice. And we're back to using this. 
Great. Oh, the dispatch event. Yeah. What, what is all that about? Well, um, this container, or sorry, this um, object, this house is extending a Zim container, which extends a CreateJS container, which extends an event dispatcher. So that's at the very root. An event dispatcher, well, which extends an object, but anyway, at the very, almost at the very root is an event dispatcher. And there we are dispatching an event called Fallen. That means outside of here, we can capture on our house that we've made, we can capture that event with the on method fallen and do whatever it says in there. All right, Wonderbar. Uh, here we are disposing. Um, this overrides the Zim dispose. So there is already a Zim dispose on the container, but this, I've added it in here so that you can add any custom, say removing of events, for instance. So we are still calling the Zim uh, containers dispose by accessing the super and then calling the dispose on it. The reason for this situation right here is that uh, when you dispose a container, that container might have objects in it that also have disposes, that, uh, et cetera, and you can end up getting these feedback loops that, that we don't want. Uh, so this handles a recursive disposing that happens inside. So just keep it like this. And what you want to put in here is say you added a, a key down event on the frame. We wouldn't be able to dispose that because we wouldn't know it's there. So um, you want to do that, you want to dispose or turn off the key event right here um, as you dispose. Otherwise, the object gets, stays, stays around and gets kept in, in um, memory. Okay, uh, another thing is if you say you made a custom swiper that goes along with this, you might want to dispose your, your custom swiper because we may not know about it. All right, uh, any events that are actually on the object will clear those automatically by just removing all events that are on an object, but it's good for you to do your custom disposing in there. That's the little message. Ah, getter setter methods. So what getter setter methods do are they act like properties. So if we come back into here, we can see here we are getting the house's bottom color and here we are setting the house's bottom color to blue. So when we set, we accept, we expect there to be some value that we're setting to, but when we get, we need to return a value. And if we take a look here in the module, when we get, we return. When we set, we're expecting to receive a value. So it's just a way to call a couple functions on, on getting or setting a property. Because often, things have to ha have to happen. For instance, we can't just set this color uh, blue on bottom color because that just stores the value blue in a, a variable. We've actually got to do more than that. And what we're doing is in this case, we're setting the bottom's rectangle to that value. Okay, that's that extra step. Sometimes there's five steps in here. Or sometimes there's a hundred. Often it's like three or four. You might want to validate something or uh, whatever. Okay, convert something and then then do it. So those are getter and setter methods, a nice easy way to do get and set methods. Thank you very much, JavaScript, for that. A lovely, like this is a, a very nice system. The only thing I find a little bit weak is the private, uh, private variables, private properties throughout. But at least we now have a way to actually do that. Because <laughs> it didn't launch with that way. And to do this complex thing called symbols or something. I had never even bothered. All right, but once again, uh, you could possibly take this getter and setter in here the old way, which was applying it with an object directly on the object. And uh, you could do that all up here in the constructor if you so desire. All right, that was the basic arrangement then. And the globals one we took a look at, the only difference with the global one was uh, that we're on the mod here. Did we look at that? I think we did. We're on the mod here. And therefore, we're using mod house as we do our Zim Duo mod house. Okay. Um, moving over to the full version, though, we have a couple extra things. We have style. So here we are applying style to our house. We're setting a size. And we're going to see that. And we've also, we're actually using the Zim Duo technique here to set the top color directly. And we're using Zim V values here to set it to one of the 
things in this array. Very nice. That's about it. Oh, we're collecting an event object too with some extra information. So we'll show you how to how to do that. Let's have a look at this house of ours. Open in the default browser. Ooh, it's a big house with a purple top that time. And this time it's a big house with an orange top and it fell the other way. Okay, so let's check out the style. What if we set it to a size of 20? And we refresh here. Oh, it's a small house. That's too bad. <laughs> yeah. Small house. Oh. All right. So uh, we'll set it back to 200. And by the way, we don't have to set it on house like that. We could just put it right in there like that. Size, uh, style, size of 200. That would mean that anything that had a, a size property, parameter, would, um, would be set to 200. Yeah, size parameter be set to 200. So the house would be, but also so would the panes label would be too big. Unless we turn off, so here's where we're wanting to apply that style. So we could say style is equal to <coughs> squiggly brackets. Or we can say style, go to the class style dot clear. Either one of those would be fine. Guess which one I do? <laughs> Shorter one. All right, so that would turn the style off. But in this case, we are applying the style directly to the house. So house, like so, we'll get these styles. And that style is size 200 goes up in there. OK, nice. We wanted to check to make sure our style was working directly on our house class as well. Shall we see how uh, we can make all this happen? All right, let's go into our module full then. And we scroll on down. Here's our exporting our house directly. So our Zob has house in it. So those match. We have added a few more parameters. Oh, and we don't have the default parameters in there anymore. So that's what it usually looks like for us when we're applying styles, which makes it easy for us to just copy that and stick it right down inside here for our SIG. Okay. Uh, style will allow us to say, turn off the style, like don't use style. Group is like a class, so we can uh, any object that we can make, we can apply to a group and then apply styles to that group. And then inherit is um, uh, how it inherits, and also we can pass in an object literal with a bunch of uh, uh, properties in there that would we would inherit. Okay, so the duo stuff is pretty well the same, except the sig has gotten bigger. The type is there, type house. And then here's what we do to apply styles. We're specifying group as this dot group. That allows us to access the group from the outside if we want to find out which groups we're part of. Um, and then we just follow this line right here. As long as we have a this dot type defined up above, if you wanted to, you could just put in house there. That will pick up specific styles uh, geared towards a house. Uh, as, as we have. <clears throat> and there's the group and the inherit. So that's the system if we're using style, which presumably we are, unless that got set to false. And then we're storing that in DS, which I, I think stood for direct style. I can't remember what, <laughs> what we actually had a D in there, but S stands for style. I know that. A nice short little variable for us to have. And in here, we are um, going to apply them now, so as defaults. So how style works is if we don't have, if you haven't specified something for a certain parameter, then it's going to go check the style to see if we have a style for that parameter. So here's size. If we haven't provided a size, so if size is equal to null, then we're going to set size equal to, um, if this is true, so this is a, a ternary operator here, if this is true, then apply that, else apply that. So if there is something in the style of size, then apply the size style to size. Otherwise, choose 100. So here's where our defaults are right at the end of these. So bottom color is equal to, if there is a bottom color in style, then grab the bottom color from style. And here, and remember, this is only if we didn't even have a bottom color to start. So nice, huh? That's it. Style. Oh, not quite it. 
just right down here. So one more thing that we add to style is as long as style is not false, then we apply various transform styles. So that's things like scale and alpha and rotation, but it's also any um, method type things that, that we have added to style. Things like animate, so you can animate things with style. Um, center, uh, outline, for instance, you want, do you want to see? Uh, let's go back here. So here's our full. If we outline the house, comma, outline, colon, true. Uh, here we go, and we refresh here. And there's the outline of the house. Oh, too bad. Outline is a snap. Out outline is a snapshot in time. Sometimes it depends on uh, if the house gets transformed. Well, anyway, whatever. How about what? What would happen if we outlined everything? Style. So now instead of just outlining the house in there, we're going to outline everything. Oh, we need a comma in there. Comma, and we refresh. Can you imagine? Ooh, the triangle. Oh, oh, everything's outlined. Look at that. The pane, the label in the pane, the triangle, the rectangle, everything is outlined. Oh, isn't that marvelous? So anyway, that was an example of that. Um, so that's it for style is this bit and this bit, I guess, these extra parameters. Here is how to do a pick. So this is the, the Zim V values, the dynamic parameters. You would say, hey, let's choose zim.pick.choose the size. And what that will do is if we passed in a min and a max value for the size, say a min of 10 to a max of 100, it would then pick from, from that value and apply it to the size. Yay! You can also use zik there instead of that. What This is so powerful that we decided to make it available for all libraries, a platform sort of agnostic kind of thing. And so we've got that up on GitHub. Uh, if you search for GitHub Dan Zen, that's where Zim is on GitHub, then pick is there as well. So is duo. And we decided instead of just calling it Zik, Zik was our short three-form word like uh, Zog and Zid and Zum. <laughs> we got all these global little short three things that start with uh, three-letter words that start with Z. But anyway, so Zik is what we use internally. But uh, when we made it sort of platform agnostic, we called it pick. So it would be pick.choose that. Uh, great. And we do that for the size, the bottom color, and the top color, whichever ones we want to pick from. Down below here, when we um, let people specify a bottom color or top color, we also pick the what is being passed in there. That's not quite as important, <clears throat> but it could be handy at some times, but it's not quite as important for uh, us to do it there, but we have. All right, that's Zim V value and the Zim Duo and the style. Wow. Oh, one more thing was that event. So in the last one we, we took a look at, we saw the event right here where we just dispatched Fallen. So once we finish falling, we've animated down. Once we finish falling, we dispatch. It's fallen. In this one, we've added a custom information along with the, the falling. So to do that, we make a new create.js event, and we pass in fallen. We store that in a variable event. And then we can add things onto that object. So add extra, or whatever word you want to use there. This is kind of how e.target is done, or e.keycode, etc. Uh, but that's already been done for us on the various types of events. If it's a key event, or a, or I don't know, a mouse move event, or mouse, I guess we've got a press move event, mouse down event. Anyway, uh, there is us applying extra things. We can add as many of these as we want. And then we pass the event off in the dispatch. So now when we receive that back here, once the house has fallen, we collect the event object right there, and then we can zog what that uh, extra stuff is. Yay! So let's have a look. Let me refresh here. 
F12 to get there. There it falls, and now it says yay. Do that again. Here it is. It falls, and it says yay right there in the console. We're zogging whatever e.extra is, and as you can see here, we're dispatching an event that has an extra property on it. Okay, cool. Good. I think we've done it. I think we went through uh, how to set up classes here in, in Zim modules, uh, which are the ES6 modules. We have a constructor. We're collecting parameters. We talked about the Zim Duo. Uh, we talked about properties a bit. We did methods here. Remember, your methods could be up above, stored on this, like so. Um, we showed you how to dispose something, how to use some getter and setter methods. We talked briefly about private properties, but we don't have them left over here in the examples, and that's fine. Um, in the previous example, we saw how to, how to do the uh, importing and exporting as well, and talked a little bit about all of this ES6 module stuff. So that is great. I'm glad that you were here. It's not too bad. It's good that you were here. I am Dr. Abstract. This has been a Zim Explorer, custom classes here in Zim modules. If you're uh, digging this, you're welcome to come and join us at zimjs.com slash discord, zimjs.com slash slack. We would love to see you there. <laughs> Woohoo! Take it easy.